And welcome back to Penny Royale Dive number two. Uh, as you can see from the profile in front of you, a uh, pretty standard dive. We started deep, got shallow, stayed shallow. Quite a long dive, almost an hour and 16 minutes. That that's a uh, that's a pretty good pretty good dive for me anyway. Uh, the GoPro did not last that long. I recall it died. I don't know when, but. Uh, you will not be seeing a three minute safety stop or exfil in this video. Uh, we got down to a maximum depth of 55.4 feet, so quite a bit shallower than the first one. Although I still managed to make my computer mad with the two red ascent warnings you see in front of you. And since we didn't go as deep, obviously the temperature was quite a bit warmer, although... What does it say at the bottom there? 58? Yeah. Um, well, you know, again, it was probably a little bit colder than that because we didn't stay at depth for very long. But I will get into, I, I kind of hemmed and hawed over whether I should show you on the map where we dove. And uh, considering that it was just a bit different than the first one, I'll go ahead and show it. So we'll see that next, and then we'll get into some live footage. As promised, here is the dive plan or the dive path we took. I believe this time I walked in, <laughs> but essentially started in the same area. It was right around, kind of walked in from the shore here. Oh, I didn't turn my didn't turn my orange on. Hold on, hold on. Orange thickness. Okay, that looks better. So as I was saying, we started in, you know, walked in here. Our picnic table was over here, by the way. PT, so you don't forget where that was. And we, I think, I walked in here, put fins on in this very shallow area, and then kind of looped into the side here and probably dropped down around here which is where you see the 58 feet uh over here where we dropped in the first time it was a little bit deeper and we might not have even gone all the way to the bottom this time but as i recall we had a plan to kind of take the same path i think we saw some of the same things except this time we uh kept going straight until we hit this wall we took a right, or I guess this is the water. <laughs> we did not go up on land onto this, uh, I guess this is a road to east side ramp. Yeah, this is, we stayed in the water. And then we decided quickly that it was kind of getting boring here. So we did a 180, boop, around this way. And kind of follow the wall all the way back this way and got into here and kind of just started going to everything we saw. Uh, it was right around here where the GoPro battery died. Uh, they had an airplane here, which is pretty cool. I mean, you know, it's no, it's no Mermet 727, but it did have wings on it, which is more you can say for a lot of the airplanes at Mermet. Um, yeah, that was, uh, what's 35? Yeah, 22 feet. That was not it. Uh, all right. Well, I'm not going to look at that list of, of items. It was around here somewhere. And then, uh, yeah, we kind of went around and sort of swam back up the ramp, popped up when uh, it got shallow. And that was that dive. Nice long one. Then we, uh, X filled. Degreased our gear, and we got to Fat Ed's in Metropolis, Illinois in a hurry, because that place is awesome. But before that, let's take a look at what we saw. Oh, quick mask clear. A little, little more surface action here. I kind of like starting the video on the surface. Ooh, we can give you a countdown. And down we go. I always do like watching the sunlight dance in the uh, in the water there. I don't see that a whole lot where I generally dive. Uh, you know, when it's murky and stuff. Uh, 
Oh, this water's pretty clear. Look at that. That's pretty clear on the surface. Generally, don't get that vermin. Get that Cosmo. I guess I was playing with a fish that did not make the camera because I had it tilted too far forward. I don't know when I will ever learn. All right. Anyways, get sidetracked. You know we gotta pay some bills. So this video brought to you by Dive Machetes. Take a look at your typical dive knife these days. You might even be able to slip it past TSA. The fact is, dive knives have shrunk in recent decades, all for silly reasons like stowability and focused function. Dive Machetes is here to buck that trend and bring dive knives back to their glory days and beyond. Our base machetes start at 15 inches, crafted with forged stainless steel and razor sharp. They can slice through a whole reel of tangled fishing line without breaking a sweat. Keep that moocher dive buddy at bay. He's not getting any of your air this dive. Shark attack, please. Our full line of dive machetes will have them swimming for the depths. And if a machete just isn't enough slicing power, check out our flagship. A full length katana made from titanium alloy. It's enough to make the samurai drool. Engraving options are available, and all models come with a lifetime guarantee and lifetime sharpening. Visit our website at divemachetes.com to shop our full line of blades. Dive with confidence. Dive with power. Dive machetes. Okay, thank you, Dive Machetes. Did Tom have trouble clearing? I think I might remember Tom having some trouble clearing here. Um have to go back and watch it. I don't remember. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I was checking something out. Oh, I think I was looking at direction maybe. I should have at least taken a cup of setting to the wall. That would have been the smart thing to do, and yes, I do believe I did that now, because I remember checking the compass, and it was very closely following... Yeah, I just told Tom, let's go. <laughs> yeah, we didn't even go to the bottom this time. It doesn't look like... Um, you know... Like I say every time, I'm watching these for the first time with you, at least in detail. That makes it more fun and saves me some time, so <laughs> that's my strategy. Is that the gun safe? Uh, yeah, I think we dropped down on the gun safe again. You can hear me uh, do a little, ch -ch -ch, a little pump into the BCD there. Of course, as you descend, uh, you know, the water pressure compresses air spaces, so any air you have in your BCD gets compressed to a smaller volume, which provides less buoyancy. So as you go down, you gotta pump more air in your BCD to get the same volume to get that neutral buoyancy. And as you go up, you need to vent it out. Or a volume increases, increases, increases. Well, I'm having a hard time with the lens cover here. <laughs> it's actually not a lens cover. It's some kind of filter, some kind of yellow filter. Um, I don't really know what it's supposed to do. But underwater, the uh, light is mostly so dim anyway that I can't imagine that filter doing much. At least not for my eyeballs or GoPro optics that I have. Maybe if you have some big baller camera, it makes a difference. 
but I can't see it. So I just pop that filter on and kind of use it as a lens cover now. I figure if that thing gets scratched up and I really want a new one, I can buy that a lot more cheaply than a new light. Yeah, so I'm definitely checking my compass there. That was five seconds ago saying, it's this way. <laughs> it's a brave man who puts me in charge of navigation. Or rather, it's a brave man who follows me while I'm navigating. But yeah, I remember this rope kind of uh, was pointing just about exactly where we needed to go, so... Kind of took the fun out of navigating. But uh, I think it did kind of deviate, deviate a bit at the end, so... We'll have to see, you know, jog a memory. So we're going due east on a, what would that be, almost 90 degree heading? Yep, that would be east. Following that rope closely. Yep. <laughs> That's actually a technique. Um, I'm screwing around here, but uh, something they teach you early on at, at Mermet anyway, or it would apply to any place where you're diving with ropes. Uh, you generally not supposed to tug and hold the rope. Um, you know, especially if you get 20 people, you know, 20 students doing that. It's going to stretch, maybe come untied. Uh, but if you want to follow the rope, if you just want to, you know, be hands-on so it feels like you're close to it, you're supposed to just kind of put a loop, just loop your finger around the rope. So that way you kind of have it in contact and you're not really tugging on it. Um, it's just kind of a, I don't know, feel-good thing. What's the word for that? I don't know. I can't think of it. Words are hard, but hopefully uh, you understand what I'm what I'm trying to say. No, oh, we're back to the uh, to the crab shack. This time I actually went down to the cans. Okay, though that, that's trash, man. Somebody just brought some freaking trash can or uh, beer cans down. <laughs> were those tied to the basket? I didn't even stop to look. Ninety-nine percent of the time, I'll uh, you know pick those up, stuff them on BCD, take them to the garbage. Uh, but I think they're actually supposed to be featured items of interest in this quarry, so I left them alone. Man, I'm torn. So my dive club is doing a uh, dive on September 10th. And I was thinking about going to the beach starting that day, so I got some I got some thinking to do because I we'd be diving down in Arkansas at uh, I can never remember. There's two lakes down there. I can I can never never remember which one is which. There's Bull Shoals and there's Norfolk or Norfolk. I can never remember if it's Norfolk or Norfolk either. But one of those three lakes. <laughs> Uh, they have an annual trash pickup thing where, yeah, they uh, get uh, impressionable people to do their dirty work. You know, go around the lake picking up trash. That <laughs> and no, it's actually good. It's, uh, you know, you pick up some trash and I think they give you a free air fills all day. And they might give you a big discount on boat gasoline, too, or something along those lines. Yep, oh, I'm back at the telephone. Back at the uh, Bass Pro, Bass Pro emergency. Got a beer. You gotta call up 1-800-BASS-PRO every time you run out of beer. That is an inside float trip joke that nobody listening or watching this is ever going to understand. <laughs> Back at Daddy O's boat. But yeah, so I'm like, you know, am I going to the beach to dive or am I going to Arkansas to dive? And I'm thinking maybe I can do both. It's going to require some more time off from work than I wanted, but you know what the hell, I've got the vacation. Got enough stashed away, might as well use it. Maybe. I'd pretty much be gone for uh, for a whole week. Is that time? Oh, we're getting kind of far apart. 
I don't know. I don't. I don't like super long vacations. A week is really a long time to me to be gone from work. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Some people save up their vacation and take like. I don't know. One guy I used to work with. He would. Uh, man, he would. He would take some vacations. You know, he he'd save it all up and then he'd go like weeks at a time, if not a month. Like, I think one time he went backpacking across Africa or something, like, some ridiculous, awesome adventure that not everybody is, uh, <laughs> not everybody, and by that I mean quite a few, uh, quite a few, as in not many people would be willing to do something like that. I don't think I would want to do that, but, uh, just, you know, nothing else. Just be gone that long. I I don't know. I, I don't even get that many emails. Just the thought of coming back to that many emails for a whole month uh, is already making me nauseated. But, you know, people do what they want to do, so kudos to him. Backpacking across Africa sounds... Kind of dangerous. <laughs> um, yeah, that guy was uh, cool, very smart. Obviously, had a sense of adventure. You know, I could probably, if he still worked with me, I could probably talk him into, into diving. It might be something he'd like to do. I don't, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, I need to decide if I want to take a whole week. And that following weekend, I've got a bachelor party. Uh, yeah, it's like you got nothing to do, nothing to do, and then suddenly, boom, everything converges all at once. So I hope, hope I get to dive in both places. Alright, you can tell we're pretty darn shallow at this point, because you can see the sunlight dancing on the ground. I would guess we're within 20 feet, maybe 25. Um, can't see my watch. Oh yeah, is that that Winnebago? Whatever you want to call this, that, that there, that's an RV. Don't go falling in love with it, Penny Royale. Cause I'm gonna take it with me when I leave here next month. <laughs> now, Christmas will be here before you know it, and then it will be perfectly justified time to watch that movie. Of course, I'm talking about Christmas Vacation. I hope you know that. I the fish like hanging out in the Winnebago. Of course, I can't quite see my uh, watch now. I'd, I'd like to know how deep we are. But yeah, we gotta be within 20 feet just for the way the uh, sunlight is dancing on the ground. If this was Cosimo, we could be, you know, 50, 60 feet down. You still see that, you know, still see stuff like that. Probably, maybe even deeper. But, uh, you know, in your Midwest quarries, that's kind of a rare sight. <laughs> yeah, how much longer do I got? We still got ways to go. I'm sorry for the. Uh, just, uh, uh oh. Uh -oh. Wrong, uh, wrong window in focus. I don't what those shortcuts did. There we go. Oh yeah, we got uh, 20 minutes, maybe. Boy, this water looks really clear. I don't remember it even being this clear when I was there. This is, uh, man, this could be Cosmo. <laughs> okay, maybe not, but... The shoes? Somebody left their shoes? Oh man, that reminds me, so... Yeah, I went, I went diving in Arizona recently, and uh, you know, I talk about talk about this more in the Arizona videos, but long story short, I left, well, it's not really a long story, but I left my freaking boots out there. Um, I had everything drying in my hotel room. You know, the boots always take a long time to dry. And, well, you talk about some quick drying. Oh, hey, fishy. I turned that camera on in time. <laughs> Very curious fishies in this quarry. But 
But yeah, I had, I had everything. My hotel room in Arizona had this teeny little balcony, and it was just enough room for me to kind of put all the things out there that needed to, you know, that I normally put on the drying rack. I found this thing in the closet, which I have no idea what this is used for. I can't even really describe it. It kind of folds out like a... I don't, even, I don't even know how to describe it. Uh, but I found something to kind of hang things on. It's kind of like an ironing board, except it's not a board. It has straps for a table. I don't know if you're supposed to sit in it. It's about the size of a... Or the height of a chair, I guess. You can kind of fold it so it's vertical and fold it out so it kind of scissors open. And it's got these straps on the top. And, uh, okay, that was a pretty good description, I guess. And my last hotel room had one of these in it, too. And I, I just, I don't know what these are for. I do not know. I guess it's supposed to be a chair. You know, like a folding chair for the room just to give you somewhere to sit in a pinch. I, I don't know. I don't know. But I use it as dive gear drying rack. So I put everything out there. You know, in the Arizona heat, it was their rainy season. <laughs> That's not a joke. It really was their rainy season. But things were still drying, you know, like that. But the boots, the boots always are a pain to dry because, you know, you can't even turn them inside out. Uh, so I left them out there a bit longer, and days went by, and I totally forgot they were out there, and I packed up all my stuff and left them there. So, and I didn't even call the hotel. It was on my mind to call the hotel. Didn't do it, put it off. Now it's been like two weeks. I'm sure they're gone, so I'm just... I think I'm gonna give up on the whole venture. Yeah, this is where Tom wants to turn around. Yeah, so that's where we hit the wall and turned right. And Tom made the executive decision that hey, there's nothing else this way. Let's, uh, let's pull a 180 and go back to the objects. So I need some boots, and... I well, I need to do some shopping. I've never bought boots except for the very first day I signed up for dive class. And I have a, my beef with the boots I got. You know, they're entry level, you know, student rookie boots. And they're they fine. Hey, they, they work great for me up to this point. The problem is they have very thin soles. And a lot of dive sites I've learned are rocky. <laughs> Nobody wants to pay to do things like pave their parking lot. Or, in the case of Arizona, you know, the walk down to the water was very rocky. Um, and it kind of hurts after a day of walking on those rocks, especially when you're, you know, carrying heavy gear. You got added 30 pounds, 40 pounds. So you get even that much more weight. So I'd like my, ne my next boots to be uh, th thicker soles on them. That would be fantastic, more like shoes. Um, but when I do warm water diving, you know, maybe I still would like some thin ones, so I'll have to look at that. But I doubt I'd get something so thick that my feet are going to be hot. You know, I think I've been hot in the water maybe one time. Uh, you know, I've said it before, when you, when you're diving in the summer, uh, in these quarries, Quarries are cold, so you gotta have some kind of thermal protection. And uh, it's hot in the air on the surface. So you, you put on your wetsuit, you put on your dry suit, and it is a race to get into the water. Because that provides relief. Even even if the surface temperature of the water is, is warm, it's still gonna feel a lot better than the air where you're just sweating and sweating. But uh, yeah, I think there was one time. It was one of those Arkansas lakes, Bull Shoals or Norfolk. Bulk, where uh, yeah, this quarry had these lighthouses around. I don't, I don't really know why. I guess every quarry kind of has their their quirks. You know, Mermet's got those bicycles around. I guess this is Penny Royale's version of the bicycles. But I remember one time, yeah, in, in one of those Arkansas lakes where I had a thick wetsuit on because uh, we usually dive deep when we go down there. 
At least there's a couple of us that do. Actually, most of most of the people don't. Uh, nobody wants to mess with the thick wetsuits, the cold water. But there's a couple of us, three of us usually, who uh, don't mind getting cold. Yeah, four of us, depending on who goes. But uh, yeah, we we were coming back to the boat, and we were close to the surface, probably 15, 20 feet. And I just, just man, I'm hot. And we were out of the cold water, above the thermocline, and. That was the first time in memory where I remember feeling hot in the water. But that's generally not the case, and it certainly wasn't my feet, so I think I can get some thick sole boots, offer some protection from the rocks, and I will be just fine. I'm on a fish hunt here. As you can see, I've said in past videos, this is kind of no man's land for my light. Well, it's doing an okay job there, I guess. The floodlight would be completely useless. I mean, when you have this much ambient light, it's a... Uh, oh, there's a catfish. Yeah, I remember him now. Uh, yeah, when you have this much ambient light, the uh, artificial torch doesn't add much to it. The catfish just decided to uh, do a lap there and come back to home base. All right. <laughs> Threw me off your trail, buddy. I'm totally lost. I don't know where you went. <laughs> Boy, this water is clear. This is, especially this shallow. That's surprising. Usually at these quarries, and it was busy too. I told you it was like Women's Day or something. The place was absolutely slammed. And uh, usually at the shallower. the shallower depths it's all stirred up students are there kicking stuff up kicking the bottom up now look at this you can see the light dancing on the bottom plus you saw the dive profile in the beginning so you know we're shallow at this point but man that clarity of the water just uh it surprised me i guess we got uh, lighthouse number two here at least number two for us just here sitting on cinder blocks. I don't even see a plaque or a explanation. I guess it's just stuff in the water. Maybe it's not a uh, search, and, search and recovery mission. It's the bikes at Mermet. I should do that. I've mentioned this in, in previous videos. You know, they got bikes scattered all over the all over Mermet, and it's one of the few things where they don't have the ropes attached to them. So it's like a, uh, oh, that was to flush my mask. Clear my mask. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a hunting thing. They, you go to the first bike, and then I guess maybe that one's easy to find. I don't know. And then there's a plaque on it. It's like, you know, go on with this heading at this depth to find bike number two. And you find it. And it's the same thing, you know, go with this setting, go with this dip, or bike number three. Um, I'm wondering if the lighthouses were something similar to that, but if they are, I'm sure not seeing any clues as to how to find them. So I'm thinking now that's not what these are for. It's lighthouse number... Three, I think. Tom saw something that was picture worthy, apparently. Oh man, just checking out what we got left. Almost done, folks. Got about 10 minutes left, maybe. Don't forget, this is where my GoPro died. Uh, oh, somebody's computer's beeping at him. That isn't mine. Two-handed dive. Going vertical. <laughs> I do kind of enjoy that. Oh, going inverted. Two hands down. Down, down, down. Uh, yeah, I was trying to find whatever Tom was looking at without kicking things up, so I went head first and decided it wasn't that exciting. What do we got here? Some more of this seaweedy grass kind of thing. You'll find this at Mermet. 
It's actually denser there. Oh man, I forgot to get some water. Throat's getting a little dry. I've been talking for uh, 25 straight minutes now, which that's probably not a long time for some of you talkers out there, but I do not do much talking normally. But the show must go on, so I'm going to keep on going till my voice drops. Here is lighthouse number four, number five, and I still am clueless as to where my easy divers swing. Yeah, uh, it'd be nice if I actually caught that. Still don't know where my camera's pointed. Remarkable. I'm almost a dive 100. And I still am having trouble with my camera. I'll have to pause the video. I couldn't couldn't read that fast enough. Yep. <laughs> Got some curious fishies. I say curious, but after my uh, experience with the first one and the first dive, I think they just want to eat me. They're not curious. They're looking for something to eat. For me. trouble was I was completely defenseless. I did not have my dive knife with me on this dive. Uh, I normally don't take it into quarries just because, I mean, I'm obviously kidding about the defense stuff, but even in real life, uh, you know, dive machetes excluded. What about my sponsors? Remember that. <laughs> but generally, your dive knife is used for cutting fishing line if you get tangled up, things like that. And uh, quarries don't have fishermen, so there should be no fishing line in here. And so I generally do not take my knife when I'm diving in a quarry. Now, the Arkansas Lakes, I absolutely take it, because that place is lousy with fishermen, and, and there's all kinds of uh, fishing line, fishing hooks, lures, all that kind of stuff down in uh, Arkansas, so I absolutely take my tire stuck on there pretty good. I absolutely take it there, but here it's just another piece of gear that you don't need. Like I said, uh, I think in the first video, this would be a great snorkeling quarry. I mean, so even if you're not diving, uh, bring your mask and snorkel. Just look how shallow we are. The, uh, the light's bouncing off the objects, so it's got to be relatively shallow. Like I said, my guess was uh, is uh, within 20 feet. Let me. Uh, but here's some more booms. Let me check the, uh, how deep are we here? Yeah, 18, 19, 20 feet. I'm just kind of scrolling over the back three-fourths of the dive. I think the deepest I saw was 22. It's hovering right around 19, 20. Even shallower than that in some parts. This would be great snorkeling. With this kind of water clarity? Shoot. That's swimming along. I think I'm capturing them, and I'm not because of them. there we go. Tom, wait up, Tom! You leave me in the dust. What? Oh, that's a boat. We we saw something. I don't know if I'll have it on camera or not because it was towards the end. Uh, it was like a satellite dish or something. And I mean like the old school satellite dishes, like the ones you saw in people's backyards that were anchored into the ground and they were like, you know, 10, 12, 15 foot diameters. I wonder how that worked. Was that just like a subscription thing or... Did you just buy the dish? It's like this big honking antenna and then you kind of tilted it hoping to pick up things. I don't... I don't know. I mean, it makes sense for it to be a subscription service, right? Although all the digital technology, the DRM stuff, couldn't have been in, in existence back then, so... I don't know how that worked. I guess they make cable boxes work. Oh, I do have orange fins. I need to get some orange fins. Although, I think I can get orange fins, but... 
I think an uh, unwritten rule of diving is instructors are supposed to have colorful fins and regular people are not. Uh, at least that might be true with orange. So I, I swear, I think I remember my, my instructor telling me once, or maybe I read it, that uh, Scuba Pro made these really awesome fins. But they didn't sell them to like, the general public, the orange ones anyway for a while because they were only supposed to be for instructors. I don't know, that could be a total... Contemplate me fishy. <laughs> Contemplate this finger in your face. What are you gonna do about it? He's gonna flap his fins at me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know, I still have my s the first fins I ever bought. I bought them and the boots at the same time, so these are kind of the cheapest off-the-shelf things you can get. Um, I don't know. I've thought about getting some other fins. It is annoying. I've been smoked quite a few times in the water. What does that say? Uh, it's upside down. I can't read it. And I probably think I'm pointing my camera at it right now, you idiot. I'd have to pause it. Oh, this was the plane. Yeah, this is the plane I talked about, I think. Is this... Yeah, see, yeah, look at this. This plane actually has wings on it. Uh, I can see the uh, nose, nose cone's missing. So check out this plane having wings. Those are pretty, pretty big wings for uh, being underwater. I don't think you got a wingspan like that at Mermet. Unless I'm just totally forgetting something. Boeing, uh... And the 727 certainly doesn't have that. Found me a rock in a rock stack. Look at that. Yep, again. I... <laughs> There's my contribution to Penny Royale rock stack. On the, uh, what's left of the nose of this awesome aerial vehicle. This aeroplane. So doubles as a submarine. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty impressive wing wingspan. I don't think you're gonna get that at, at Mermet. Uh, can't quite see it, as usual. Some of the Cessnas still have their wings at Mermet, don't they? I can't even remember. I've been there a hundred times and I can't eat can't quite remember what the wings or what the wing situation is at Mermet. I know the 727 doesn't have it, and I know the helicopter sitting on top of the 727 doesn't have it. There's a fish hanging out in the juncture there. <laughs> Which direction are we going? South. Or wait, was that north? That was south. That was south. You gotta, here's the satellite dish or something, what, whatever, you tell me, what is this? <laughs> so it didn't make it. Uh, yeah, I think that's a satellite dish. It's a big sucker, whatever it is. Oh yeah, I found this, uh, yeah, I, yeah, that's when I was like, okay, this is a satellite dish, because that was a screen material. You can see it was kind of flexible. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Oop. Bang my camera on the bottom there. <laughs> uh, uh, what was I talking about before the satellite dish popped into play? Man, I'm not even drinking a beer right now. I should not be forgetting this. I just... Ugh. Lights are on. Pressure's on. <laughs> I can't remember. can't remember what I was saying. Oh, well. Couldn't have been that important, then. Following the rope. We are nearly out of video. Because, uh... These freaking GoPro batteries... I've learned there's two things I really don't like about a GoPro. And, you know, you can't have it all. I know that. Certainly as an engineer, I know that. Uh, 
the battery life sucks, and video at night sucks. Uh, that's the problem with GoPro. Uh, other than that, I'm amazed at how much functionality they pack into that tiny box. I don't know how they do it. I don't know what kind of processor they got in there. Uh, and you know, the battery takes up the whole thing, essentially. Uh, so the actual room for the electronics are at least like half the camera. Um, yeah, that's pretty nuts. I, I have my beef with it, but uh, all in all, it's a pretty remarkable little device. It packs a big punch for the price point. Um, I mean, this thing, the model I have, performs 4K 60 frames a second. I mean, how the hell does it do that? <laughs> this is HD, so I, I, I do my dive videos at 1080p 60 frames a second. Although I'm supposed to have it set to flip down to 30 frames a second if uh, it starts getting slow, you know, or starts getting dark rather. Because, you know, it gets dark, you get less light in, then the whole picture gets. Oh, I'm giving that sharky a ride. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't actually verified if it does that flip or not. This is the last minute. We got a rope to the school bus. Look at that. Penny Royale's got its own school bus. Close my eyes. I think I was in Mermet. Should have gone in there. <laughs> I think I just poked my head in here. Yeah, I did not do a swim through, although you can see the end, the uh, exit there in the, in the rear. Should have done a swim through. They even pulled the seats out. Easier than Mermit. Alright, folks, this video is wrapping up. That's going to do it for me, and this uh, concludes my dives at Penny Royale. Stay tuned for tomorrow's dive at Mermet. We're going to see some things you've never seen before. Just kidding. <laughs> see you next time.